today I also have a special guest, and that would be Jamie Perviance, and he is the Weber Grill Man. And Jamie, you have a new book out. I'm going to grab the book and kind of show it to everybody. It's a fantastic book. Thank you. Called Weber's Greatest Hits. You drew 125 recipes from how many in the archive? I've done over 2,500 recipes. There are definitely some of my personal favorites in there, but it's basically kind of a crowdsourced I like that. book idea. Well, it's a great tip for grilling. Right. So mise en place basically means just get your stuff together, get organized, right? So it's kind of like what we have here. You got right. your cutting boards, your knives, and more importantly, you got your, your ingredients. We're doing two kind of appetizers today. Uh, the book has everything from starters, entrees, side dishes, a lot of desserts even. But I thought I'd do a couple of past appetizers. So one is called a tapenata bruschetta. And you have to say chetta. Yeah, yeah you don't say bruschetta. The Italians get very upset when you do that. So bruschetta. So it's a grilled eggplant and tomato mixture with a lot of lovely other Italian ingredients, tomato and olives and capers and basil, a little bit of uh, goat cheese, and, uh, and then of course the, the toasted bread. So one little tip about grilling eggplant is that um, it can occasionally be bitter, particularly if it has a lot of seeds like these do here. The big fat ones tend to have a lot of seeds in them, and that's where some of the bitterness is. So what you can do is you season the eggplant rather liberally and, and let it sit in a colander like this. And what happens is a lot of liquid gets pulled out, and that is the bitterness in there. So what you're left with is just kind of pure, nice eggplant flavor. I use kosher salt. I, it just, it's not the only salt in the world, but I, I like it. It's got a nice coarse texture, which is easy to pick up in my hands and feel how much I've got. The fine salt is hard to do that way. It sort of dissolves into meat really well, which is important when you're grilling, because you don't want things just sort of escaping into the grill. You want them to adhere to the meat or the, or the vegetables. In addition to the eggplant, I'm gonna grill some onion. Pretty much everything that goes on the grill gets a little bit of oil. Um, and I tend to oil the food rather than the grate. A lot of people will, will wipe the grate down with something oily and, you know, it works, but I'm not a huge fan of it. And then these just go right down on the grate. I'm up at about medium high. I'm going to lower it a little bit. Usually vegetables are done at around the medium. I'm going to get some steak on too because I don't want us to have to, to wait too long. These are, uh, well, anyone from Kansas City knows their steak, but this is filet mignon, beef, beef tenderloin. Uh, and you can see that's getting a nice bit of smoke as well, so I'm going to put that lid down to trap it. And it's also going to keep the grate a little bit hotter, and that's going to help create a better sear on the steak. Steaks, generally, I only turn once. Big mistake a lot of people make is, like right now, somebody would be thinking, oh, i got to get in there and like work it. But if you find you can almost just roll it over like that, then it's a good sign that you can be ready to go. You just give it a little... Question of a stick. This one's sort of borderline, yeah. but I think it's going to go for me. And there you have it. So once you've chopped up those vegetables, all you need is to do is add them to your mixture here. So this is tomato and black olives, uh, like kalamata usually, some capers, a little bit of olive oil, uh, and we're going to add some fresh basil to it. Yeah. And then yes, then what we do is we're going to toast some bread. Um, and then we're going to smear some goat cheese on there and put the caponata, a little basil, and... Are you going to be able to finish this one up? Yeah, okay, let's see what we got here. Let's see. Okay, so what we do is we're just going to cut these into, into thin slices. And we're going to lay it on top of the uh, onions and give it a little bit of that creamy horseradish sauce. Oh, that looks beautiful. Still pink in the middle. I love that. Yeah. You know, it, it does get a little redder as it sits and exposed to the, the air. Everyone has their own deadness preferences, of course. So this is a uh, sour cream and horseradish combination. 
So I like the sweetness of the onions against the spice of the sauce, and then of course that smokiness of the meat. And um, would you do Perfect. me a favor and put, a little, put some of those chives on top, Absolutely. just for a little garnish? Couple of things to try for summer entertaining. You know, I think a lot of people have their favorite main dish. You know, they did love their steak, they love their brat recipe, maybe their ribs. Sometimes appetizers not quite sure what to do. So here are a couple of options. Is it okay if I try one? Please. Alright. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everybody. Bye.